All right, Paul, it's that time of the year. Uh-oh. Role play. It's a little light out for this right now. Isn't it? <laughs> I love every time I say that, your mind goes right in the gutter. Okay. Listen, when the six foot five, 240 pound man says, let's role play, the word no is not normally something that you can safely say. I mentioned this on uh, the, the round table discussion that we had with Ryan and Ray. Coming into this season, <clears throat> okay, you are head coach Sean McDermott. Okay. Okay. You came in. The... I'm just going to answer every question like I know that. Where he's coming. Um, so now, what I happened to mention, it was kind of like a passing moment, but I did, I did want to spend some more time with it, was the fact that now there's a difference between chasing the crown versus defending the crown. Buffalo Bills are the AFC East defending champions. Yeah. Okay. I love saying that. It's, it's got okay. such a nice ring to it, does. it, doesn't it? So, how, do, Sean, how do you mentally prepare your team this season as opposed to previous seasons when you were chasing the division crown? Now you have to defend it. Does, does, does the psychology of your team change this season as opposed to last season? You start clapping, I'll punch you in this ring thought about it, but the clap would have been out of context, so it didn't make any sense. Yeah, no. Paul, Mario, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. No, you shouldn't hear that. You've chosen wise. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you're cool, <laughs> you, I'm out. Go with that. All right, somebody woke up in a mood. Oh, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> what happened to our show? Guys, this is why we can only see each other once a week. You get no orange slices after soccer <laughs> practice today. What's up? I see draft. Well, you know what they say. Genetics, Pee Wee. <laughs> I can't top that. That's the end of the episode. <laughs>
new so, starters? Wow. Rousseau and Basham, I don't really think are qualified as starters because I think we all know that Addison and Hughes are, are going to get the first snap week one. Like, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's going to be a rotation. So even calling starters at the defensive end position is a little tough. I think they're probably the only players who are going to be expected to play a decent number of snaps from outside of this organization from the previous year. Re- outside of Emmanuel Sanders. Okay. Besides him, who else? So you're, you're just saying business as usual for the Bills? No, what I'm saying is that oh, okay. those players are more ripe to defend their accomplishments with the Bills. They're more proud of it. It means more to them. Yes. Then if you bring in a player, like you sign a player, you bring them in, and you're like, listen, we're former champions. We need to get back there. And they're like, okay, yeah, I want that too. Not, oh, I've been there. Oh, I've done that. I know how that feels. Yeah. So right? you, got, you got guys like Moss and Davis who, like, opposed to a fan, is carrying around all these years of this. Mm-hmm. Moss and Davis only know women. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Okay. That's right. exactly right. I like your point there. So is that why you didn't see a big shift into the Bills bringing in new starters? Because you say, listen, we want to hit the ground running. We need a team of guys who are accomplished or proud of what had been accomplished. Is this a true McDermott loves to stick with his guys? It could be. I mean, the fact that you could bring your team back over and over and over again is impressive. I think money, too, is a big deal. Really? I, think, I don't think you're going to sign a really highly high-priced free agent right. with the $260 million man. Yeah. I think that played a part. But I'm, what I'm saying is I, I like your point in the fact that Okay, he went for a guy that was their guy instead of a guy they brought in, Tyrell Adams, Mark, Mark you know what I mean, stuff like that, then guys who contributed to the success of the team because those guys know what is expected of them. They right. their roles. Right. And that's a great point. I love that comment. See, freaking Scarlet Witch me again. Hashtag Sports is now partnering with MyBookie.ag. Bet, win, get paid with mybookie.ag using promo code HTS when you sign up. That helps out the channel immensely and gets you a double of your first deposit up to $1,000. This is the best and simplest website you can find for sports betting with live in-game betting or even betting the bills to win the Super Bowl. You want to do that? They've got great tools to tell you how much you'll win when you use promo code HTS all at mybookie.ag. No, because you know how I am. I'm always... I'm always going to examine the psychology of the right. athlete and right. the football player and the, the game itself. And that's what I love to examine. I'm like, okay, how did this – okay, if Allen throws three picks in the first quarter of a game, how will that affect him? Yeah, not that he will. I'm just saying, how will that affect him? Well, Mar, I, I want to – so let's let's examine a dynasty, okay? And we're going to talk about the Patriots just for a minute. I don't want to, but let's just examine the dynasty, right? Okay. From start to finish, it was a massively long run. Right? Massively long run. Yes. Who is responsible for the dynasty? The Patriots organization or Tom Brady? It's one or the other. Who is responsible for the dynasty? The organization or Tom Brady? And the reason I say that, right, is because the Bills are trying to build a dynasty with all the same players. The Patriots organization cycled players in and out. Eventually. Yes. Right? The first couple of years, they did try and get the team together. But over time, you do have to break that up, right? And the Patriots got to a point where they just consistently cycled players at a high volume, right? Yeah, but that, after they started winning, mm-hmm. players wanted to come here for less money. Right. Yeah. That, that's one thing that happened. The second thing was this. Belichick would get rid of players off of his team two years before they started to show decline. So you could tell that in the, you know, like in the Patriots organization – there were probably fans that were like, why are we getting rid of him? They got rid of Lawyer Malloy. Everyone's like, yeah. what? Yeah. How many more productive seasons did he have? He had one with the Bills. That was it. Yeah. And he was done. He cycled that position. So he probably took some heat from it. That's why I always said, I don't want any cast off what that Belichick's willing to get rid of. Richard Seymour went to the Raiders purgatory at, at the time. He went for the money. He had maybe two, you know, I don't know the exact statistics. I'll probably get called out on it, but I, I don't remember him having a big splash. And, and his, but that's what he did. So if that's the blueprint you're talking about with the Buffalo Bills, cycling players before their time is up, you're going to see players leave Buffalo, Bam Johnson, even though he's starting his career. Um, 
you may see some players that leave Buffalo that are like, why is he doing that? The guy's still productive. Well, they see that he's not going to be productive the next two or three years. Well, this is already an age defense, though. Like, I'm just going to look specifically at the defense. It's already an age defense. So you have Hamlin and Johnson back there with Hyde and Poyer. Right. Yeah. Right. But the point that I'm the point that I'm getting to is yeah. that with the Patriots, it was the emblem that was the dynasty, right? Yeah. With Buffalo, because they're returning the same players over and over again, it's the team, not the emblem. You see what I'm trying to say? Like it's the staff that's trying to build the dynasty through the players, right? They're trying to build that pride in the players and that ownership in the players. Mm-hmm. And at some point, you do have to say goodbye to players that you would love to keep, but no, you can't, right? For a variety of reasons, through declining play, salary, whatever the case may be. But there's an incredible amount of pride to be a Buffalo Bill right now that we haven't seen in decades, no. right? Decades. And I don't even know if when the Bills were a dynasty, if there was this much pride in being a member of that team. Like, there's a lot of pride in being a Buffalo Bill right now. It's amazing. It really is amazing. It is. But are the Bills trying to recapture because and retaining everybody that they had? because they know that this works and this is the recipe for success. And is that really a dynasty if you're retaining the same players? Like, doesn't that put a time, isn't that putting a timer on your success? Isn't that, isn't no, that kneecapping no. your success? I, I think what it does is this is the bed you make. Yeah. With the moves you're able to make and the financial decisions you're able to make, this is the team you were able to put together. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now when you bring in new guys, they're going to learn from the guys that are here that have been here. Like, listen, I've been here a couple of years now. You're going to listen to a guy that's been at a job for one year or a guy that's been at a job for 10. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not to say there's going to be guys that are 10-year veterans on the team, but the point is being, you're going to look to those Jerry Hughes guys, Mario yeah. Addison, uh, now Tremaine Edmonds now because he's been there for three years, Josh Allen, stuff like that, Feliciano maybe. Mm-hmm. You're going to look at those guys. When the guys that come in that then eventually replace those guys mm-hmm. to cycle those positions – they're going to learn from those guys because they've been here for a number of years. Listen, this is what the coach likes. The coach doesn't like blah, blah, blah. So they're in the beginning process of trying to build that dynasty through the organization. So you're not at the cycling guys yet. You just made a great point. You don't even know it. What would I do? The success of the Buffalo Bills is the fact that they don't gift anybody any position. If there's a position that's open, they draft somebody. They bring in a couple free agents, all being paid about the same, and they let and they literally let them beat each other to death for the job. Oh yeah. So there's never a time where a player is replaced, right? Do or complacent. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's you're exactly right. Okay. There's right. always that competition. There's always breeding that ground for. Yeah, I started last year, and yes, they brought in two free agents, but I know this is my crown to defend. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, Mario. It's it's come full circle. It's a hundred percent the exact same thing. Where you know you you're building pride in not only being a member of the team, you're building pride in your previous accomplishments, but you're also also building pride because you weren't given that job because of your paycheck. You were given that job because you you beat two other guys out every year for it. Yeah. Every year they're trying to do what was best for the team. You knowing that, no, you have to work your ass off to start. So when you start, you're proud of that. Yeah. When you're not starting, like when they when they draft guys, you think Hughes and Addison see them as, oh, they replaced me? No, they didn't see them as, oh, you replaced me. They saw it as, great, now when I'm not on the field, I won't have to work twice as hard when I get back on the field. Yeah. That's great. Thank well, you. Well, and, and then, too, like to, to couple your point as well, the guys that don't get the starting job, they know they were given a fair shake to get the starting job. Right. And they probably know what they have to work on. So yeah. that's what they work on. Yeah. It's not that, oh, I came in as a – with the exception of Al. Okay, can we take him off the table, please? Uh, hey, listen, Nate Peterman was a starter here, and I think that's indisputable. I mean – He's a I mean, starter for all of – I mean, what, 30 I mean, minutes? What, <laughs> I mean, you got Allen and White. Edmonds, if he's healthy. Yeah. Like you're not replacing those they're those those positions aren't up for competition basically. Right. No. So except for those three guys, I mean we can name more. But the point is this. If if you're you are gonna be given a fair shot to make to be a star. If you're not, they're gonna give you the coaching needed to become the starter. Right. That's why I love the fact that they have Johnson and Hamlin now just as a you know, what a cycling position. 
I mean, I asked it on the broadcast. Um, how confident are you in Hamlin and Johnson as the two guys back there? I they fit. I mean, from a mold perspective, yeah, right? They fit what you're they fit gonna what want. You, yeah, they each one fits a role well, right? Johnson would replace Boyer because Johnson is a little bit of that. You know, he's got that dog in him. Hamlin is typically more of a high. He's more of a center fielder. So he's a hammer too. He can be. So is high. Be. I can be a hammer. I can be a hammer too. But what I'm saying is yeah, they've yeah, replaced yeah. the they've replaced the prototype. Yes. You know. Um, but I just thought that was interesting because, I mean, I like how you you wrapped up my point really nicely. Like and follow for more. <laughs> <laughs>